That's uh, something uh, we're worried about uh, a lot, um, and it was very important that the, that the I have to say, in some, some of the earlier drafts, the, the humour, when we came back to the, to the, the, the boys at home, uh, for, um, it was, um, it, it was a little bit kind of heavy-handed, you know, the, the men were lots of um, filth everywhere, and, uh, you know, an absolute mess of swearing, cursing, and uh, loads and loads of kids doing stupid things. And um, it was just kind of to try and boil it down to, to something that was um, just a little light and a little and, and funny and recognisable, and then um, wasn't going to take away from the drama, uh, which was building uh, in Lourdes. and so that and so that every time you go back to Lourdes you feel there's an escal there's going to be an escalation, um, and just to keep it as, keep it as light as possible. The, 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 the scene with Stephen Ray uh, and the children was. Uh, you know, that was almost completely improvised. Uh, Stephen just had such a relationship with those kids. They loved them. And they, and they just saw him doing, doing stupid things with a stew, and they just thought, what is he doing? And then he, and then he it was just makes me laugh every time I see it, because I, I think of uh, how connected the kids were to him. Uh, the, it's really charming. The, um, the film goes on general release on Friday yeah. in Ireland and the UK. Uh, do you have any expectations of the way it will be received in Ireland? No. Uh, it's interesting. In America, uh, they, got, they, got, um, they got really interested in the, in the faith, uh, the, the religious aspect of it. The Irish aspect of it didn't mean a huge amount to them. Um, the, uh, the English, I don't know how they'll take to it. We're releasing in th 300 cinemas here, uh, so that's a sort of start. They'll have a look uh, at you know, how it goes and they'll increase if it, if it does well. And in Ireland it's been pretty well everywhere. It'll be pretty well everywhere in Ireland. Well, we thank you very much, Teddy, yeah. for coming to yeah. screen with us here tonight. Thank you for having me. We wish you the best of luck, will it? Thank yeah, you. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, appreciation please for Tavius O'Sullivan. First of all, uh, we have to say thank you to Teddy Sir Sullivan to, uh, for uh, previewing his new movie here this evening. Uh, I understand this is the first showing in the UK. Yeah. Am I right about that? Um, there's a lot to talk about. A wonderful film, brilliantly uh, realised. Uh, first question I'd like to ask though is, it's notoriously difficult to get permission to film at Lord's. How did you manage to get that? Why did they let you in? That's your question. <laughs> I, I just, it, it struck me that um, it was quite a feat to, to film around the shrine and the whole thing. Oh, we didn't actually shoot there. Yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I thought you knew. But, uh, <laughs> no, we, we, uh, some of it is CGI, uh, uh, computer generated uh, imagery. And we built the grotto and we, we built uh, the baths. In Arden, and um, and uh, and then th there's some library material as well, some quite good quality library material, and then some stuff we stole from another feature film. <laughs> <laughs> and they put it on the market. If they shoot stuff like that, they put it out in the market, and anybody can can purchase it. A couple of shots like that, a couple of library shots, and then uh, quite a lot that we created, it, computer generated. Okay. Well, it's certainly very convincing because you, you had me fooled. Um, it, it's a film, you, you jump us back a couple of generations, here, um, almost to a world which uh, is not quite completely gone, but is, uh, it, it creates a kind of vivid 
recreation of that world, which I don't think we uh, would recognize too much anymore the, the way we live now. Uh, were you conscious of uh, kind of recreating a world? But it's, it's kind of like uh, creating the past as another country. It is. Uh, it felt uh, that was the country I left in the, in the 60s, and uh, it's, uh, it, all, it feels now like it. Um, I wanted to set it in, in that period. Uh, there have been various uh, iterations of the story over the years, and, uh, and people set it in different time frames. Um, when it came to me, um, that was a period that I felt was, would work because it was a period of um, change, the beginning of change. And, uh, and so, it, in some cases, it was um, um, way in the past. It felt like the 30s. Uh, and uh, and then other times there was a hint of Carnaby Street, you know, in the in in Agnes, uh, sorry, not Agnes, and and Dolly's, you know, um, a, a hint of um, fashion uh, there. And uh, she was very much one foot in two camps. She was still still listening to the old wives' days um, and and still dressing like it was the you know the swinging sixties. And then. Where paradoxically uh, the women were very wise about all that. They, they thought. I guess it was a tradition that they had. They had. Uh, they'd forgotten that they'd established. You know that you could. Uh, she got it all mixed up about the whiskey and the water. But it was. It was something that they. It was their legacy too. But they'd kind of forgotten about it. And uh, and poor old Dolly was uh, still um, living a sort of quite a living in a bubble. Yeah. In that way. I, the the opening uh, shots of the film. I mean, you don't need me to tell you that you're an accomplished filmmaker, but I thought it was really, really clever the way that you let the camera do the talking to recreate the world, uh, the religious iconography, the, the Sacred Heart pictures, which are kind of blurred in the background, uh, not full on full focus, but we can kind of pick them up in our vision. Um, is that something that you deliberately set out? Yeah, do? I mean, uh, you can overstate that. Um, uh, like you can overstate the language, uh, the, 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 uh, the idiomatic language of uh, Dublin. You can overstate that. Um, and so uh, I was always careful about layering it in, layering the, the world in so it kind of grew on you. And uh, John Han, the production designer, and I know the period pretty well, and um, we uh, talked a lot about the iconography and the wallpaper and uh, you know all the textures, and uh, we wanted to get it in, but we had to be careful, and we wanted it to be colourful, uh, and we wanted it to, we wanted it to be recognisable. We did want people to say, "Yes, I remember that wallpaper, or or, the, or that kitchen chair, or you know, all of that." And uh, John. Uh, was uh, such an obsessive uh, um, designer. He would, uh, he would. His attention to detail was, was marvelous. Um, but yeah, the, all the religious stuff you have to be careful of. Everybody here knows it was in every living room in the house. There was something. The child of Prague and one had the Sacred Heart in the, in the room. Still is Sacred Heart in another. In some sure, point, yeah. of course. Uh, so you know, it has to be there and. Um, um, John and I, when we would say, where would you put the child of Prague? We would know exactly where it would go, you know, and where would the Sacred Heart go? Where would the lamp go? We just bring the lamp, Sacred Heart lamp too much, or, you know, we just have it in the background. Um, we don't make a big thing of it. And uh, it's, um, it's, it feels very real to me, that, that world and, and all that detail. John, John's uh, uh, detail is so amazing that, um, uh, Kathy Bates was just feeling her way around the set one day before we, we were shooting, I think. And uh, she stopped and looked at the door jam in the kitchen. And John, the designer had put all the markings on the door jam the way you do when the kids are growing up. And that was never going to a register on camera, of course. And, uh, but Kathy Bates felt that, um, that she, was, uh, she was with people who knew what they were talking about and that she was comfortable that uh, although she didn't know much about that world, uh, that when she was standing in front of something, it was going to be real. It was people who were, they were pulling it there, 
um, understood what they were doing. Um, Other little illustrative details like uh, the boiled bacon being a luxurious price to win <laughs> for the, in the competition, uh, the little kids st uh, standing up and singing Spencer Hill. Uh, it all it, it does help to recreate uh, something very authentic. Um, and we, we should talk then, I think, about the, the three actresses who uh, kind of bring, bring the whole thing together. Um, with the exception of Laura Linney, who I think is Irish-American, but uh, Kathy Bates, Maggie Smith. Well, Kathy Bates is Irish-American. Uh, actually, her grandfather was uh, Irish and, uh, from uh, Kerry, Castle Maine, I think. And um, she uh, was very, very happy to be in Ireland. Very, very moved with the whole experience. Um, Maggie has a, a connection with Ireland throughout her whole working life. Uh, you know, she's played lots of Irish parts. She's played Irish parts on the stage many, many times. Um, so she found it. Um, she didn't find it difficult. We had a, we had a dialect coach on hand all the time, and uh, she spent two months uh, with with uh, Kathy Bates on, on Zoom. Um, uh, but but Maggie didn't need much. She would every once in a while she would she would call him in. How do I say this? So, and the, the the problem is always the is to leave out the, uh, the the rhetorical, you know, type of Dublin uh, voice, and and uh, make it make it simple, uh, and um, because uh, it's it's if you want to get two Dublinese, it's it's a very hard rhythm to get unless you really you know are from it, and um, uh, she was. Um, she got it. She got the rhythms after a while, uh, and that was the important thing. The action kind of follows the rhythm in a way. And uh, and Maggie just was uh, so comfortable in in uh, the slight patrician attitude, you know. Uh, so the probably the original woman, as conceived by uh, Jimmy Smallhorn, was um, probably you know a lot more. How are you? Uh, um, and uh, but. Uh, you know, we went with what Maggie could could, could give us, uh, rather than push it into the headscarf and coroner's territory. She's mm -hmm. also able to express a great deal with just magnificently visual face. It's yeah. She just put herself on the line. She was very, her very... Her eyes are uh, very expressive. She can kind of express nuance with a twitch of an eyebrow. It's, mm -hmm. it's very, yeah. very impressive. They, they, they all... Um, the thing that impressed me um, most of all, I think, was the sheer um, uh, quality of thought they put into the, into the characters and uh, what the characters would be like. And they had in their heads, you know, a very clear beat. Actors, of course, do anyway, but there was something about the quality of their input that was really pretty amazing. Because we had no rehearsal time. They came, from, uh, they came uh, to Dublin just a week before and uh, um, we shot and you know with all the costume stuff work that needs to be done all the things that needs to be established and uh, there wasn't much time for rehearsal there was time for a few conversations and uh, but that was mostly um, turning the pages of the script and trying to figure out you know what was working and what we take out and what we needed to can you imagine. tell us a little bit, bit about the genesis of a script that begins with a, a short story by Jimmy Smallhorn but um, Joshua Moore and Timothy Prager are also credited with the screenplay. But th that seems like an unlikely partnership. How did, how did that all come together? Yeah, uh, well, uh, Jimmy, it was Jimmy's story, yes. And uh, he had wanted to make a film of it um, many, many years ago. I was first approached uh, in 2006 by HBO. Uh, they wanted to make it. And uh, I went to talk to them. And uh, for various reasons, they fell apart. And, um, I had nothing to do with it then until it came back to me two or three years ago through Tim Prager and, and Joshua Mora. Uh, and, and they said, well, what about your man who was involved all those years ago? Would he like to come back? And Tim Prager and I had worked on a couple of BBC projects together. And um, Tim's American, but he has been to Lourdes about half a dozen times for, for personal reasons. Uh, and uh, he is a uh, Catholic. Um, not a practicing Catholic, but he's very interested in religion and Catholicism, and uh, so he contributed a massive amount. Um, and uh, 
and of course we had the, the Jimmy's original script as well. And um, I brought in another writer, Laura McKenzie, who is not credited in the main uh, titles, but she was she contributed a lot. So there was um, there was a lot of people involved in in pulling that around uh, uh, to tell that that story. I, maybe sometimes it does seem a bit schematic, the story. We have the you know, three-act structure. Mm -hmm. It's very, very clear. Um, but um, within that, uh, I think we, we opened it out. And, and uh, with the actors, uh, uh, with that kind of level of performance, we actually were cutting stuff on the day. You know, do we need to say that? Because I'm looking at Laura Linney doing nothing, and it's much better than half a page of the dialogue that yeah. we've yeah. got. And, uh, you know, because like I say, she had the, the beats in her head where she was at any given time. And uh, yeah, that's had to change sometimes, of course. And um, we had to sort of, you know, take stock a little bit and uh, re-rehearse and stuff. Um, but she was, um, she'd always bring it round, she'd always bring it back to uh, that journey that she was on from the moment she left Ireland when she was 17. That was a clear path for her where she was, what she had done, what she'd been thinking, and uh, what, the, what, the, what the effect on her life was. So we did have background dialogue, which explained some of that. Yeah. Um, what was she doing all those years? Yeah. But we decided yeah. to dump it, because uh, it, struck, it struck us that she embodied that, that uh, there was something missing in her life. And uh, there was the child, and, and uh, it was the banishment. That's what was missing. We don't really need to know a lot about what she had done in the meantime. I think people, um, people pick up that she was a carer of some kind. People have suggested that she was a, maybe a nurse or a doctor or something. And uh, that's the kind of thing we wanted people to think. Feel. Yeah, it seemed that the exposition was just enough for us to fill in the gaps, and we, yeah. could, we could paint the picture ourselves. That's interesting that you mentioned Timothy Prager's Catholicism visits to Lourdes, uh, because there are some themes in the story which actually kind of contradict the, the Lourdes aesthetic and the, the whole idea of Lourdes. Huh? Do you think, uh, is this well, not what uh, the writers are getting at? So the, the Lourdes that we, we wanted uh, was, um, uh, Tim and I used to talk about, you know, the spirit of Lourdes and that people who were of any religion or no religion could go there, whether they were cynical or whether they were cultish about it, or what they could go there and the thing that, that, that people, that, um, that I wouldn't say overwhelmed, it might be too strong, but the, the, the atmosphere of Lewis, watching a lot of people express their faith in this, in this way is uh, inspiring. And um, we had that in our minds all the time, that. And you know, I saw this film as a kind of rogue movie. You know, they, uh, I had Thelma and Louise in my head a lot. They, you know, they, the husbands don't get, you know, fed up with the idea of it. They leave the husbands, they leave the kids, they look after yourselves. We're getting out of here. And then uh, we're getting out of here. And yeah, we're going, maybe we want to go and have a miracle, or maybe we want to just go and have a holiday. You know, it's, I mean, there's a skepticism there as well. Not, not all, you know, completely. I think the Maggie Smith character is quite quite, quite sceptical. And uh, so they, they go to Lourdes with an open mind, and that's what everybody says about, you know, uh, the idea of a pilgrimage, yeah. is that you must leave the, the past, you must leave your life behind, open yourself. And I think the most cynical person will go to Lourdes and they'll, 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 they'll open themselves. Now, I have never been there, I can't say, but my parents have been there. and. Everybody in our street went, and you know, people talked yeah. about it a lot, and then um, people talked about the, the effect of it, and certainly my mother and father talked about it a lot. My mother, particularly. my father had been ill, and um, my mother had prayed for his recovery, and he did get better. And she had, she had always said, and a lot of people will recognise this, I will go and make the pilgrimage to thank Our Lady um, for her intercession, and uh, that was a big thing in our house. Okay. Well, you certainly gave us a gentler landing than we get with Thelma and Louise, anyway. <laughs> uh, I would imagine there are some questions. Uh, even just the researchers, uh, exactly. we were supposed yeah. to go, and uh, the money the money suddenly came, the actors were suddenly available, it was just, 
because getting to the position of making this film is an absolute nightmare. And uh, we thought we'd, I had plenty of time uh, to, uh, to do that because of the various delays. And then suddenly it was like, we're ready now. Uh, I think we were waiting on Laura finally. And, uh, and I just never got there. And, um, but I'd still like to go. I'm sure um, you would, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Another question over here. Thank you. Thank you. I, I thought it was a They're shooting it there, but it had been so modernised and, and, and so not very visual. So it, was, uh, it, it, was, it would have been the, uh, it was something that I hardly ever really considered, um, uh, apart from the fact that it would cost uh, fortune to bring it back to the sixties, and. Um, uh, the designer uh, used to walk his dog around this area, which uh, a lot of people know quite well. It's in Black Rock, opposite Black Rock Clinic. It's just a little, a little, a little area of, uh, of working class, uh, two up, two down. And um, uh, and I thought that would, we could we could pretend that was Ring's End, and we would we would you know pull a bag yeah. was over there and and uh, these. Streets were close to the sea. Why, to why I down. ask you was because it reminded me of the Hitchcock film Marnie. Um, Marnie. Mm, it, you know the, the 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 girl going back to her mother. Right. And um, the the sea in the background. And there were houses like this. Yeah. yeah right. It was very very atmospheric. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. It was okay. Wonderful. Comparisons with Hitchcock. <laughs> <laughs> Another question over here. Oh, okay, do that. Where was the church? Uh, the church is a, a, the interior, the, the, the exterior is Auckland Street. Um, and the, the interior is a, a Protestant church in Bray. Church of Ireland. Church of Bray. It, it's very, very hard to get into to shoot in Catholic churches. <laughs> Whereas the Protestant, in, in the Church of Ireland, they're usually in charge. You know, the, 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 the vicars, you know, it's his decision, but they usually, when it comes to the Catholic um, uh, churches, uh, they have to go up the up the path of the bishop. Hierarchy. And um, and now I've had you know I've I've shot in Protestant churches for Irish for Catholic churches a lot over the years. My so parents were married in that church, which is now. So I asked the priest. I said, my parents were married here, you know. <laughs> Let us in. <laughs> do you, do you, Wouldn't have it. Do you, do you but he said we could shoot outside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could stand in the street and avoid the camera. Uh, do, do you think there's anything in that? Why the, why the Catholic hierarchy so? Exploited. I think they were, they were afraid of, um, you know, just abusing their generosity and uh, making fun of That's their, their world. Welcome. Yeah. Okay. Um, Interesting. Just uh, I, I was, uh, by the way, I, I thought it was absolutely beautifully done and, and really emotive. Um, Thank you. But there was an aspect to it which uh, gave me pause, and that was with um, Jimmy Smallhorn, if that's his name. When he wrote the story, did he give you any insight into why he chose to sort of have her move off to the US pregnant? Whereas the, the well-worn path for abortion is to is to England, or you know the, the piece around should have given the child up, given the child to the nuns. So that was that was a typical path. But I mean, I, I was unaware of there being such a, um, a sort of a, a, an exit to the United States in the same circumstances. No, I, I agree. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> the most obvious place to go is as um, as England. Um, I think she was, wanted to get as far as away as she possibly could. If she was afraid of, uh, I think this was our story, our backstory, that uh, she was supposed to go to um, relations and uh, she didn't want anybody to know what she was doing and she wanted to get as far away as possible. And um, I guess Boston, <laughs> being so Irish, was a, was a, a draw. Um, but once there, she was uh, couldn't engage with the Irish community, which would have possibly helped her, and uh, decided that she was, she would just absolutely go, go it alone. And uh, that bred in her this, uh, this absolute sense of uh, separation uh, 
from a background just to get further away. I agree, it's, it's, a, it's a more obvious one to land in England. And I think at one point we did have that in the script. Um, I, I don't think, uh, that wasn't in Jimmy's story anyway, so I, that was something that was developed later. Well, I mean, that change I thought worked really well because obviously the 40 years going to the United States made sense. You know, if, if a person was in England, you think reconciliation could happen more quickly, so I can understand why the story worked better. I agree, that. absolutely, yeah. The, the sense of the, the surprise among the, the local community that she returned is also strengthened by the fact that she had left for America. A lot of them went to America and never returned, so it was something almost like an alien returning within their midst. Yeah, it kind it of strengthens that part of the narrative. Yeah, it wasn't that uncommon for people to just up and go. Um, I, I had a I really might have some of my relationship here tonight who I haven't seen in 40 years. <laughs> and uh, I remember uh, a, a man who was a, um, a, a cousin uh, of my father's. And he had the, the land next door to my, my uncle's land in Kerry. And uh, it, they just, he used to come in every morning for his breakfast to my uncle's, he's part of the family. And then one day he just disappeared. And he came back uh, 20, 30 years later. And uh, he came back to sell the land. Nobody would touch it uh, during that time. I remember, I remember working in my uh, uncle's land, and and his, and his cousin's land next door was gone to seed. You know, no one would touch it. And then when he came back, of course, he sold it to somebody else. He wouldn't sell it to his cousin. <laughs> that, was, uh, did he, that was a rupture. Did he explain where he gone? <laughs> He'd gone what to, was, he'd what gone, was his reason? He got to work in it. <laughs> you got the next movie. I don't think he ever said it. I mean, he was never somebody to say much. And uh, <laughs> I used to remember, I remember coming in and having his breakfast and then just going out and working in the field, never saying very much to anybody. And uh, that's the way he lived and that's the way he went. Uh, and um, he just suddenly came back. 20, I can't remember, but it was like a, like a, several generations later. And uh, to sell the land, and then disappeared again. Apparently, <laughs> but I, but that's, that's a common story. <laughs> I think I think a lot of people identify with that. Okay. And um, okay, next question. Um, uh, it looked like Declan was ever going to come, yeah. uh, and I think that uh, it was the final despair. A bit. Uh, yeah, that, she left yeah. it open a bit. Yeah, I have to say I thought it was a brilliant film, um, and I thought it was very funny, but also so poignant. And not at all twee, not at all. And again, I think you, you hit the right level with understating and not overstating all of it. The religion. Uh, all of it, uh, all of it. I just, and I thought the forgiveness, again, it wasn't a, well, you must forgive. It was a long drawn out that really hit you. It really, you know, for everybody. Yeah. I thought it was really, really good. Thank you. I think that that's what uh, Tim and I would call the Lourdes effect. You know, yeah, the Lourdes, yeah. we wanted that sense I mean, my mum had been several times, but all my family had been to, you know, but the way it, and, and particularly when the priest said, well, not just for a miracle, it's to find, and I think everyone did find on. peace yeah. and find, it, it was kind of, you know, yeah. that was a great ending to it. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. It was a fantastic film, but how did it come about that you had some Polish man screaming at the time when he was going to the bars? <laughs> the one that the miracle happened to, like many <laughs> other men. His, his wife wanted to, you know, was convinced that, uh, that you know, that, uh, it, it, it was originally was a, a kind of scam that um, people used to, there were some people. Why Polish? And I'm yeah. Polish and I un understood what he was saying. <laughs> well, we didn't want, we wanted him to be, um, I, I think he was written as um, Lithuanian or something, and uh, um, he just found a lovely Polish man in Dublin <laughs> uh, who was uh, happy to run around in a towel. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and he was, um, that's not answering your question, I know, but um, uh, I just wanted it to be chaotic. 
if you get, we get it very well. <laughs> and it, it doesn't make a lot of sense, I have to admit. I mean, but you know, there was a story there about uh, people scamming, pretending that they'd had a miracle, and uh, and I just sort of changed it for the last minute, and I had the, the, the wife saying, you know. Yeah, you have to go in, and, and you have to you have to go in. You have to go in. You have to go in, and and, and everybody thinks he's disabled, and he's not. And uh, just to make it look like he's having had a miracle. And uh, and then there's a Conroy character. The, mur the nurse says, uh, you know, um, yeah, we well, have miracles all the time here. It's, uh, you know. And the Catholic world isn't international. There's no reason why Polish man wouldn't be. Oh, no, no, of course they're, you know, Catholic uh, country, so they have a huge representation in, mm. in Europe, yeah, yeah. Okay, anyone else? Yes, uh, just to say,